The discussion we've had so far segues really well into what I want to talk about quickly, which is what is the future of your popular transport? And I want to use the word popular because I don't believe this transport is informal. It is the dominant form of public transport in your city. And the informality arises out of also the interaction with the planning authorities and the government where, for example, if you don't plan a proper bus stop or uh, you know, a proper system, then the people within the popular transport sector will do that planning for you. So it's unfortunate then to call them informal transport. So let's talk about popular transport because this is what the majority of people use. And before we do that, let's look at the big picture very quickly. What we haven't mentioned is that there's growing air pollution problems in African cities that are very serious. We have crashes, which are the number, it's the number one killer of youth globally and also in Africa. You saw the very high crash rates in Ethiopia, relative uh, fatalities relative to the motorization rate. We have the congestion emerging. We even have obesity problems for people not using active transport. We have vulnerability to climate change. Uh, even though African cities are not yet contributing uh, a lot to greenhouse gas emissions, they will if, the if this trajectory of automobile-centric uh, you know, development continues. And also, we have this problem of vehicle recycling that as Europe and other parts of the world clean their transport, they imp African countries are importing their dirty, less safe vehicles. And so that's a big problem. But when you come to the policy discussions here, a lot of times what gets blamed is the popular transport system that is actually moving people around the city. And as we've already mentioned, the bias in the infrastructure, one, towards infrastructure, and two, towards infrastructure still for automobiles is very clear. For example, this highway in Nairobi was built in a very dense corridor without planning for the public transport and bus stops that exist. And so it is now considered a highway of death. Many people die on this highway. With the introduction of BRT, that's now uh, you know, a, a move forward because it's uh, public transit oriented uh, infrastructure. But often this planning is being done without seeing the actual public transport system in the city. With digital technologies, it's very easy now with a GPS-enabled cell phone to map out your existing transport system. So this is a map of the Matatu system in Nairobi, 120 routes, and you can start to see the structure. Just like in Lagos, you can see that there's a radial system, people coming into the center with a very clustered set of terminals. Um, so you can start to now see how does the system work and how do we plan for it better. Uh, and also start to provide information systems for people because, you know, this is something we haven't even talked about, but if you go to a new part of a city, like the ambassador was talking about London, of course, I'm sure she would take out Google Maps and see, well, how do I get from A to B? That kind of information is not available. The other thing you can start, uh, until you start building these digital infrastructures, um, the other thing you can start to do is use this data to talk about what we really care about, which is not mobility, but access. So the data for the Matatu system in Nairobi was used by the World Bank to see where do you, can you get to a hospital in Nairobi within a 30-minute Matatu ride. Once again, you'll see it's in the center of the city. Um, you can start to compare access by mode, which is what I've done with some of my colleagues. And that's a proxy for inequality. You can see that if you're riding a car, you have a lot of access in Nairobi, but the minibus system creates an enormous amount of access for people. If you're poor, you're best off in the center of the city so that you can walk and access medical facilities, for example. And I just want to end on the fact that, as the deputy mayor said, that this is an existing system. When you actually start to look at it and understand it, you can see that it actually has some very impressive features. Um, and that you can start to work with this system, like what's happening in Durban in South Africa. They are working with their minibus systems, uh, trying to uh, encourage collectivization, professionalization, like what you were doing in Lagos, and branding them 
And also, we talked about investment in rail and BRT, actually putting investment into the system, uh, putting technology in to improve, you know, being able to track vehicles, give people information. Um, this has been happening in, this is in Maputo, for example, also trying to provide, they did a mapping exercise and provide information. And so I'm just gonna end with this idea of, really we have to think about what is the future of this existing system that can, is actually quite impressive in some ways. It has service problems, but these are not problems that can't be solved. But right now, are we going to displace and replace them because that's often the vision? Or are we going to embrace, engage, innovate, and improve um, using new technologies um, from below to improve these kinds of services and systems? And then frankly, they're not gonna look that different from some of the, uh, what we are now considering innovative technologies um, in the global north of like via vans in New York, which are basically matatus with some technology. So I'll end there. Thank you very much, Jackie.